tell you. Let me turn. So you have to tell me in a nutshell. Tell me what was aggregate demand. Okay. Tell me, uh, was it positively or negative related with supply? Positively or uh, with price? Sorry, negatively related with price. Uh, tell me shifts in aggregate demand. Again, same for aggregate supply. Tell me what is aggregate supply relationship with price. And shifting factors. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead yeah. and tell me. So, okay. Okay. So for aggregate demand, um, it's as the total output that produces in the economy. Wait, and, and, wait, no, 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 I'm reading the wrong definition, wait. So I can't find the definition for aggregate demand. You should have it remembered by now. Yes, I, I remember the supply, but um, the demand I'm not sure about. Okay, I'm giving you time. You search it up on net or do something and uh, get back to me. Okay. Take two minutes. Here, here. Aggregate demand, it's the total spending on uh, and an economy's goods and services at a given period of time. Uh, yeah. Yes, that is correct. And is it positively or negative related with price? With price? Yeah. Um, it's positively, yeah. Demand is positively related with price. And why do you say that? Because the value of goods and services produced in... Wait, okay. Because they're looking for the best value for goods and services. And to have the best value, you need to have the cheapest and best price. That's why. That mean that it is as it has a positive relation with demand or negative relation with demand. Uh, so if the demand goes up, wait. No, it has negative then. Yes, so it has a negative relation. Price is a negative relation with demand. If price goes up, demand is gonna go down. Okay. Then what causes a shift in the demand curve? A shift? Um, yeah. Government spending, investment, consumer spending, and uh, what was it called? And ex uh, net exports. Yes. Anything other than price will shift the demand curve. Now, what about uh, supply? Okay, um, for supply, it refers to the total amount of goods and services that all firms in an economy are usually willing and able to produce and supply at a given period, uh, given price. All right, and uh, what is uh, the relationship of price with supply uh it's 
So if the price goes down, supply goes up. Correct? Price goes, what did you down. say? Down. Mm -hmm. Price goes down. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Price goes up, supply goes up. Because yeah. if, if the price goes up, then they would want to supply more to people and make a, a higher profit. But if the price goes down, then they wouldn't want to supply at this time. Let's just say like you're supplying wheat, okay? If at this moment, wheat is very cheap, then you wouldn't want to supply wheat. You might want to look for something else in your farm. But if wheat is expensive and rare, and then that means the price is up, that means you, you want to supply more. Yes, exactly. That is correct. And what are the shifting factors for supply? Okay, so there isn't like five specific ones, but there's changes in production cost, technological yes. advancements. I remember there was natural disasters. There was government. So like if they change the rules in the government, uh, what else? Mr. I think five. Um, there was changes in global uh, economy, changes in the economy. And yeah, I think that's it. No, yeah, yeah. Because I said all of them. Hello. There, yeah, yeah, there was one more. There was change in global economy that we studied. I said it, yeah. Yeah, so exactly. These are the five uh, factors that will cause a shift in the uh, supply curve. There are more as well, but it's uh, even if you know these five, it's okay. Now, we also studied about seeing aggregate demand and aggregate supply together, right? Do you remember all of that? I think so, yeah. This, you remember this? This is a factor. Yeah. All right. Now there's one thing that we didn't do last time and that is the last thing we're gonna do in aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Okay. Um, that is this is aggregate demand. This is aggregate supply which is aggregate supply in the short run. So S R A S. I did tell you about short run and long run aggregate supply, remember? So we see them all in one uh, curve. This this long run aggregate supply curve basically refers to full employment. That means that you are using the entire potential of your economy, like all the resources that are within your economy, you are using all of those to produce goods and services. That is why this is a constant line, no matter how much your price increases, if it goes from one to 10, your output will remain same because all of your resources are used here. Right? Yes, what do you mean by output? Your output means your quantity, that um, your uh, GDP, your products that are being produced in the economy, all the products that are being produced in the economy, if you add them all up, they become the output. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay. Then, uh, um, so in this analysis, when we uh, talk about long run and short run, so if let's say uh, there was maybe a um, fall in cost of production, what would happen if there is a fall in cost of production? Falling cost? 
Yeah, if there is a fall in the cost of production, what would happen to this graph? What do you think would shift? Okay. Probably the short run. Wait, wait, wait. Say, wait, say the question again, because I'm not sure. I'm saying if the cost of production has yeah. fallen down, what would happen? Uh, which curve do you think will be affected? Will it be short run aggregate supply or aggregate demand? Miss aggregate demand won't be won't be affected. Yes, so aggregate supply will be affected. And if there is a fall in cost of production, where do you Mr. think the aggregate supply would be? Yes. Is why why only the short run aggregate supply will shift? Why within that long run aggregate supply shift? Yeah, I'll get to that. I'll tell you the reason. First, tell me that what is uh where is the supply curve going to shift? Short run supply curve. So if there's a shortage of costs, then yeah. it's supposed to shift the right. Because once yeah. Yeah, am I right? Yes, you're right. Okay. So it goes here. In the short run, your output has increased. The quantity that is being supplied has increased. Okay. Right? Now, yeah. <clears throat> why the long run is not being affected? The long run, because this this cost of production, the fall in cost of production might be because there are new resources that were discovered or maybe cheaper labor was available. That is why in the short run, our cost of production has fallen. But in the long run, we are assuming that our, we are producing at a point where all the resources, all the raw material, all the labor, is being used. When all the labor is being used and all the raw material is being used, there is no chance of uh, having a fall in cost of production and no chance of either increasing or decreasing if, even if there is a fall in cost. If, let's just say that due to some reason, there is a fall in cost of production in the long run as well. But since we are uh, completely exhausting the resources that the economy has, we cannot move further. That is why our long run aggregate supply curve won't move. There is just one situation in which our long run aggregate supply can shift. What do you think is the reason behind it? We have studied uh, five reasons as to why our supply curve shifts there is just one reason when our one of those reasons when our long run aggregate supply curve would shift what do you think is the reason the reason for aggregate supply shifting to the right yeah for long run aggregate supply shifting to the right we have studied technological advancement yeah so okay, over time, uh, if the production cost goes down and starting to continue to go uh, down, then it would be cheaper to buy the uh, production materials. Okay, and when it's cheaper to buy the production materials, the supply is supposed to go up because you're at a time where it's cheap to buy them and it's gonna be a bargain. But that will only happen in the short run. I'm asking about uh, what would happen in the long run. Okay, Miss, does the production cost stay down? Just remember that in the long run, you are using all the resources. There is nothing spare in the economy. So the prices 
cannot actually change. Okay. In the and long prices, run. Mm -hmm. Yes, go I'm, on. I, I don't know, Miss. So I was telling you that there is the, the effects of, sh uh, of shifts usually happen just in the short run because in the long run, you are producing at the point where all of your resources are being used. All right. So anything yes. that increases the resources in the economy, you studied PPC, production possibility curve, or production possibility frontier? Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine that these are the resources of the economy, and the red line shows that the economy is producing at this point. They don't have any other resources to actually increase their production, right? Now, the only shift that happens in the long run aggregate supply is when your uh, PPC, you know, PPF, that is production possibility frontier, moves outwards. Only then your long run aggregate supply curve is going to shift outwards. And this could happen due to an advancement in the technology. This is one of the reasons why your long run aggregate supply curve can shift. Is it technological advancements? Yeah. So if there is a technological advancement, that means that we can now hire less people, but we can make more output because we have good technology. When we have good technology, um, it will increase our production and hence in the long run, our curve is going to shift. This curve will shift outwards. This will be a new intersection on this actually. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. So now this was the last thing that we had to do for um aggregate demand and aggregate supply. I'm gonna give you few questions, and you'll have to make uh, graphs for those questions. All right. All right in this framework. So you have to use this diagram and first you have to tell me what would happen if what would happen if there is a increase in investment Number two, fall in subsidies given to suppliers to supply more number three. All right, these three are the scenarios. Use this diagram, make the entire diagram, show me the effect on price and on output. And um, send the picture in the group. Take 10 minutes. So, you want me to answer all of these questions? Yeah, you have to use this diagram. 
to answer these questions. It looks very hard. It, give it a try. It's simply okay, what right you right have. Right diagram? Yeah, make three different diagrams. Show the effect of all of these on each diagram. And share it on the group. Make one and send it in the group, then make the second one, then send that in the group, and then make the third one and send that in the group. Okay, okay. Okay? Yeah. Miss, I just want to be sure. At the top there, it says AS, right? Yeah. So the I positive curve line is AS. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm doing it right now. Okay. Okay. Yes, I understand the third one and the first one, but I don't understand the second one. Hello, Miss. Okay. 
Can you hear me now? Sorry. I cannot hear you. I think there is an issue with my internet. Let me fix it. Yes. Can you go again? Miss, I don't understand the second one. But I understand the other two. All right. So it says that there is a fall in subsidies given to suppliers to supply more. This means that the government had made it easier for the suppliers to produce. This means that they have actually reduced their cost of production. So by subsidies, it means that the government has reduced the cost of production. So the cost of production has gone down? Yes. OK. Miss, how do I know if I'm supposed to talk about long run aggregate supply or short uh, or just aggregate supply? This is something that you have to guess from what I have told you before. Miss, well. yeah, I wasn't sure, Miss. I wasn't sure. Long run aggregate supply means that you are producing at a point where your all your resources are being used. So if your resources are increasing, that is your labor or your capital are increasing, only then your long run aggregate supply is going to change. Okay. Only if there is an increase or decrease in your factor of productions, only then. Otherwise, long run aggregate supply is not going to shift. Okay, okay. So how about for what was it called? For the second one, is it is it no one or no? Then it's no just I could supply because you're getting extra money. Yes, so it is not affecting your core factors of production, it is just the extra money you're getting. Okay, Miss, I have a question. Yes. Why would the government uh give subsidies? And who do they, uh, how do they decide if a business is good enough to earn subsidies? Okay, so um, basically government gives subsidies to products that they want the nation to use. So for example, um, Like Masaki? Uh, 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 sorry, like? Or My Dubai? Yeah, maybe. Uh, that is one example. Another example, maybe food because food is a necessity for most people. So the government gives subsidy to the food producers to supply it more. Okay. All right. But we are gonna okay. study about it in depth when we go to policies. Okay. And Miss, uh, for the third one, um, technological advancements, it's aggregate supply, right? Aggregate supply, yes, it is aggregate supply. Okay, I'll send you the pictures now. Okay. I'll send you three. All right. Tell me if there's an error. Let me see. So in the first one, you have shifted aggregate supply and demand above. That is correct. All right. In the second one, you have shifted aggregate demand above again, and you have not made short run aggregate supply curve. Wait, 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 what? 
Mm, wait. We have sent three pictures. All right. Yeah. Wait, I was looking at the long picture. So second is also correct. Third is, I think you need to think about the third one again. So okay. there is technological advancement. It is going to affect your capital and capital is a factor of production. Okay. So Ms. what do you, what, what should I do? I want you to think on your own, what should you do? Tell me that what you're thinking about. See, anything that affects your factors of production, write it down somewhere. Okay. So should I just change it to long run aggregate supply? Yes. Ms. May, I asked you and then you said, no, it's aggregate supply. You asked me if aggregate supply is going to shift. You didn't ask me if it was long run aggregate supply or short run aggregate supply. Okay. Yeah. Anything that affects that change. Ms. How is it? I was in long run aggregate supply. I don't understand. If there is technological advancement, it there are four factors of production: land, labor, capital, enterprise. Technological advancement is going to affect the capital. Okay. When it affects the capital, it is going to increase the capital. And that increase will be shown by this shift. All right. All right. Write this on your notebook that anything that changes factor of production <laughs> change actually no thank you Once you have written it down, you can let me know and then we can go ahead with the Okay. Moin, when is your exam? Um, I have one in May 9th and then I don't know where the paper two is. One on May 9th and the other one? Sorry? Uh, one is on 9th May and the other one is on? I'm not sure. Okay, you're not sure. Can you so check that for me? But Ms. Nelson, she was giving me exams. I think I'm going to have like a bit more time, hopefully, for revisions. Your voice is very slow. Can you go again? It's now because there's going to be exams. So, Miss, yeah. I take three subjects, okay? I take economics and yeah. I, I take BTEC business, which is counts as, as two subjects because I have two different teachers and I were doing always two different topics. So, BTEC okay. business is all coursework. And so basically my only tests are going to be economics, paper one and paper two. All right. So um, your paper one is on 9th of May. I suppose that it is. Miss, do you want me to check, check now? Yeah. Okay, I want you to I, check now. I'm not very sure. I know one of them is on May 9th. I don't know which one. I, th I think I could be wrong. The first one's on May 9, and then the second one is on 
uh, what was it called? May twenty something. I'm not sure because I, my friend told me that, like the last day of school, and I completely forgot. I think I found it. Okay. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss, what is this? Paper what? shoes on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> when is your birthday? May fifteen. May fifteen. This is a joke. Oh. <laughs> I hope you have a good paper so that you have a good birthday as well. Because usually paper two is the hard one. Paper one is easier. <laughs> yeah, paper two is the harder one. So yeah, paper one <laughs> is on May nine. Paper two is on May fifteen. All right. Okay. Just let me check the calendar first so I can mark it down so I don't forget. So yeah, yeah. it's gonna be on a Tuesday. And okay. May 15 is going to be on a Monday. So, okay. Miss, do you have any other students? Yeah, I'm teaching two other students, but they're from A2. Okay. So, okay. So, like, the last two weeks of the exam is right now, like, in yeah. the spring. The reason why I haven't been doing it. My teacher should be very... I cannot hear you, Moin. Uh, sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. So my business teacher, she did something very stupid. She gave me like a whole assignment to do over the winter break, what I was supposed to do in school. So like I'm supposed to finish this assignment in winter break. And then when I come back to school, I have nothing to do. So this whole winter break, I've been waking up and just doing that as one assignment. So that's why I'm not very full of time. So after oh, the yeah. due date of the assignment, uh, she told me you could focus on economics and I most likely would be able to have extra classes. All right, great. Yes, we because we need to do that um, from today or from the next lecture, we're actually going to shift our uh, style a bit. We're going to start with past papers. Okay. So we're okay. going to stop the lectures. We're going to start the past papers because... Um, that will give you a better idea of how to write in the paper. Okay. And it will also cover up some concepts as well. Okay. I would want you to put extra effort in now because it's just one month. So what I'll do is that every uh, two days before every lecture, I'll send you two topics and you'll have to go through them on your own. You'll have to bring up your queries that you don't understand and then we'll do the, those queries and then we'll do a past paper because that is only how I see this going. Otherwise, if we uh, focus on the lectures alone, it will be difficult to cover all of it till okay. the date of okay. your exam. And Miss, is it okay you can give me like a three day uh, like a head notice? Because I would, if I have more time, then I would probably have more days to split up and revise for these topics. Because all right. I have a lot of PowerPoints for, from my teacher from every single uh, topic. So right. every topic you tell me, I can literally go, go to Teams, go find the PowerPoint, and I can find the perfect, uh, what was the code, PowerPoint to help you with this topic. Sure. I'll, so if our class is on Monday, I'll send you a list of topics for Monday and Wednesday, both on pre, uh, last Thursday. Is it making uh, sense? So, like, for is. the class of Monday, I'll send you the topics tomorrow. Okay, that's good. That's very good. Yeah. Right. But, Mrs. is our last lesson on I get supply and demand, right? Yeah. Okay. So, now, um, we uh, have you written this down? Yeah. yeah. All right. Now let me show you how your. Do you have an idea of how your paper looks? Um. Right now, no. No. I. I've, I've done paper two, but I've never done paper one. Okay. So I'm gonna um uh, bring my. La uh, I'm gonna join in from my laptop, and I'm gonna show how your paper looks. Uh, okay. To you, so that you know, let give me just two minutes to join in from my laptop. Oh, uh, yeah, no issue.
Okay. So let me show what the paper looks like to you. Do you know what's the code of your, what is the code of your uh, course? I need, uh, I think a C or, or, or a B. Yeah, one of them. So can you see my screen? Yeah. What can you see? It says sign in and Google. Oh, I think I've shared the wrong one. Now, can you see a paper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is how your paper would look like. This is actually paper two, and it is going to be one hour, 30 minutes long. It would have two sections, so it's uh, it is um, a data response type of thing. So they're okay. gonna give you an extract, and uh, you'll have to read it and then answer the questions accordingly. Okay. So the first, so the first question is something that we have not studied yet. The second question, use a production possibility curve diagram to show the intended outcome of the structural reforms in Turkey. You, have, you must have studied production possibility curve in your microeconomics course. Do you yeah. think you can do this question? Right now? No, like, do you have an idea of how you would do this question? Uh, Miss... Because right now I'm really, really yes, rusty with unit one, and like I'm gonna go over through unit one. So, uh, right now I don't think so. Okay. So what I want you to do is that in uh, before your next lecture, that is on Monday, revise microeconomics. Okay. Okay. Revise micro the basics of microeconomics so that once we do these questions it's easier for you to understand these. Okay, okay. So next lesson, you want me to go over microeconomics? Yes, I want you to go over microeconomics. On Monday, right? Yeah, on Monday. Okay, perfect. What time is it? What time was it on Monday? Uh, two. Two? Miss, I have, yeah. school. I have school on Monday. You have school on Monday. So we'll have to change the timings. Yeah, so we can go back to the old timing. The was it was it eight thirty to nine thirty? Yeah, it was eight thirty to nine thirty. Okay, perfect. All right, we can do that. Yeah. Um. Do you think you can do this question with the help of demand and supply diagram? Show how an expected change in US interest rate was likely to cause US dollar to continue to rise. Okay, this is also something we have not done. We have done demand and supply, but this is something we have not done. Okay. Interest rate determined and grades. None of this is something that we have done. Yeah, miss, but if I go through over unit one again, then I'll probably remember, I'll probably remember it. Miss, yes. how about a, a unit two paper? Or paper, uh, like paper two. Yes, so I will actually, uh, what I'll do is that I'll take out the questions that I think you can do and we'll practice those. Okay. Now, um, let me show you how paper one looks like. Wait, miss, 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 miss. Wait. Yes. Don't miss, I don't do Cambridge. You are doing edX. I do edX, so yeah. Okay, All right. Right. So there is a slight difference. Miss, it, looked, it didn't look right. It looked very different. I do edX, edX so. Okay. EdX, so fast. There will yes, be a slight difference in edX. Miss, but everything, yeah. everything we're doing here. Um, 
in what was it called in class since the yeah, beginning. Yeah, yeah, that is it, Excel. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm following it, Excel's book for you. Okay. You're doing economic C, you're saying. Sorry? You're doing economic C, you were saying. What do you mean C, like my grade? No. Um, you were telling me the class code, the course code for your course, and you were telling me it's uh, economic C, or is it A? It's AS. It is AS, but there's a code for it. Let, uh, let me just show you the paper, and then you get it. I miss, I'm not sure about the code. All right, I'll, I'll look for that. Okay, I'll look for your papers at Excel papers and then we can discuss those papers in the next class. Okay, uh, Miss. so you want to end the class here? No, no, we are gonna study inflation. Oh. <laughs> Just disconnect it from here.